The changing of the seasons is hard work. I quickly get overwhelmed with all that I want to do every season. There's garden cleanup, seasonal decorating, home projects, cooking and baking every seasonal baked good or meal that there is, and making sure we do all of the fun activities so that I know my kids are having a fun childhood. And that's just talking physical seasons, not even seasons of life. But it's important to slow down, and that is what I am reminding myself this week. Things will get done as my time allows in between spending moments with my family. Slowing down and enjoying what I'm doing in the moment will allow for both myself and my kids to have fonder memories of each season. Now, with that said, the hard work still has to be done, but it can be enjoyable in the process. Working through each item with care rather than as fast as possible just to check it off. And that is what we did this week. Today, I am taking you along for a few days of porch decorating, garden work, baking, and even a little bit of sewing. We started off our week with a little porch cleanup and decorating for fall. I had much bigger plans for all of my fall decor than I've actually gotten to so far. I had plans for a bigger porch revamp, all new bedding in our bedroom, even more decor in the rest of the house, but that takes time. And so I am just fitting it in little by little throughout the season to bring small moments of fall coziness until the end of the season. I also have quite a few projects going on around the house, so I wanted to keep the decorating pretty simple so that I'm not just having to undo it all when I go to work on them. Now I actually got sidetracked from my porch cleanup and decorating by the jungle of a flower bed around the porch. It is garden cleanup time, and this year for our garden we did... We did a tilled area in the back for our vegetable garden and my front flower beds, which are actually pretty large, became my cut flower garden. It turns out, though, that those front beds just do not get enough sun, so they didn't do as well as I'd hoped, except for my sunflowers. But now, nearing the end of the season and with very little rain and then neglect when we were in the hospital with baby Jack for two weeks, they are dried out and it all just needs to come out. So I went ahead and cut any dried blooms to save the seeds, and this will all be coming out, getting mulched and prepared for winter. Then I got back on track and started cleaning off the porch with my husband's help. I wanted to move around our rocking chairs and get rid of a table that was on the porch to keep it really simple because I am wanting to power wash, stain, and then even add a few decorative things onto the porch. We love to sit out here, and so it's also the front entrance that we use most of the time so I did want to spruce it up a bit until I get to that though I'd wanted it to look fall ready while getting out anything unnecessary so it is easier come time to stain a few mums and pumpkins do the trick next to the white rockers for a cozy but simple porch Jack do you like being outside calmed you right down didn't it Cause you were a little cranky in there. You like my outfit on me? I do. I think you're very cute. You're like my pet too with yeah. my outfit? Yeah, I do. My shoes met with my outfit. My shoes met with my outfit, Mom. Yeah, they do. To save these sunflower seeds, I just took all of the dried cut blooms I had from the night before when I cut them off and I just scraped out the seeds that were left, it's really, really simple. I think if you left your sunflowers until right before your first frost, enough of the seeds would fall that you probably would end up with sunflowers blooming there again in the spring or the summer because the seeds were everywhere. They were all over our porch, all over the flower beds. But the ones that were left just kind of fell out into my bowl with a little bit of scraping. I didn't even have to work that hard. Um, I'm going to be working on some wreaths for fall soon. And so I think I'm going to use the dried actual sunflower part of it as part of that as well. I think it looks pretty and fallish because it's dried. Now my sunflowers will actually be, my sunflower seeds will actually be a mix because I had several. I had some autumn beauties and some lemon queens and a few other varieties. And so I didn't actually separate any of them, but that is okay. We will just spread them when the time comes and have some more sunflowers. The wind got your hair good? Yeah. Yeah, so how did you do my head in? Oh, 
flower did it blow your hair? My mama's getting sunflower seeds all in her hair. Yeah. That got dusty out. I dusty out, Mom. No, 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 no. <laughs> no. 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 <laughs> Get out of here with that. You goofball. I'm not a goofball. You're not a goofball. Don't touch me with that. <laughs> Don't touch me. Are you gardening? You've been so good letting Mama do this, little boy. But you're starting to get fussy. Yeah, it's okay. Oh. <laughs> Here I am starting on an apple butter bundt cake using the canned apple butter that we made earlier this fall. I will say it was delicious and the flavors were perfect, but it definitely isn't going to win a beauty contest. I don't make a lot of bundt cakes, so this is fairly new, but now I'm wanting to make them all the time after making this one. I think they're so pretty and um, of course you can use any cake flavor, so I'm still tweaking how I make this because I want it to look as pretty as I envision it to. And I know that my biggest problem this time was just rushing it. So that can easily be fixed with better time management. So the first fix to this cake is the marbling. To fix this, my plan is to put the apple butter down in a trench in the batter instead of swirling it in. That way it never reaches the sides because that also causes it to stick on the outside of the bunt pan. The icing was also very good, but we had a family function to be at on this day and we were needing to leave right as I was pulling the cake out of the oven. So I did ice a worm cake, which is a big no-no. So most of the icing didn't stay on the cake and it turned into more of a glaze, which was still good. But when the icing that dripped off cooled down, it was a beautiful golden and thick icing. So I know if I don't rush it, it will be beautiful and it will work out. We're gonna do a few because I don't think I measured it right. I'm gonna last step homemade vanilla. Okay, you gonna help me stir? Yeah. Okay, hand on. Teaspoon, so we're just gonna start with half a teaspoon. Drop that into the sifter. We're gonna just run everything through. Good. Not a lot, Nick. Not a lot. I only want a full teaspoon. I'm gonna start to run low and have to go get my bucket out. Dump that in there. Good. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Hang on. Not too much. Okay, dump that in there. Good. Okay, hold on to that. Now we're gonna do our flour. Smooth. Smooth. Put in here. It's cold. Oh, dump it in here. You gotta dump it down into the sifter. Good. Now you hold this and you go. Oh. Mm -hmm. Mama's just gonna do dump a little bit at a time and we're gonna mix that in. Oh that is looking at you. Turn your face towards Jack, not don't look at Papa. Okay. Don't yell at me. <laughs> you gotta listen. That's why Dada's looking at you. Mama's not very good at this. That's not very nice. Oh, you're better at it? A little bit at a time. Okay. I'm gonna get it mixed in. I'm so happy. <laughs> You're so happy? You wanna lick this? Yeah. Yum, yum. 
Yeah. Do you want to see if Dada wants one? Yeah. Do you want to take this over to Dada? You and Dada eat those together? We're going to sit this to the side for a second. Did she drop yours? Bug! Now this full recipe is not yet up, but as soon as it is and I have this down the way that I want it to be, I will add that link to the description for you. But essentially it was just butter and sugar that we creamed and we added vanilla and eggs and cream. And then we added some spices and some leaveners and some flour and just mixed all that together. And then in between the layers, we added apple butter mixed with walnuts and some more sugar, baked it, and then added a glaze. First, to dance around the room. She cut a big shape out of the cardboard, and everybody sat down and enjoyed their delicious picnic lunch. Then they stretched. My mom has always told me to wash my dishes as I go, so here I am, listening to my mom and probably watching my crazy chickens free range beside the barn, even though they're supposed to be in their run, but they keep escaping. I have been working on the enjoyment of dishes. This goes back to turning everyday work into something enjoyable it makes it easier to get it done. The warm water, a fall scented dish soap, the view out of my kitchen window and knowing what and who those dishes were used for, that's what slowing down and enjoying the hard work is all about. I have to keep reminding myself of this because I get ideas of all of these projects I want to do and things I want to get done and how I need to just get through things to get it done rather than slowing down and enjoying the process, hard work or not. I fully expect to show myself cooking some form of squash or pumpkin every week until at least Thanksgiving, maybe Christmas, because that really is what I'm doing in my kitchen these days. I cooked up a pumpkin and a butternut squash, yes again, on this day and had considered adding them to a meatloaf I was making, but they actually weren't done in time. And I went ahead and just popped them in my freezer. I'm going to use them for a pumpkin roll this weekend. I cooked up a few more for pumpkin butter this week too, and that will be out soon. And we are quickly making our way through all of my fall decor. I knew this would happen. I'm not sure if that means that I should buy more pumpkins to put around the house, or if I should just consider it a slow fall cleanup. Remember the garden this year? Yeah. And how we grew all those plants? We took their seeds. That's what, oops, that's what this is. Thank you. Can you put it in that bowl for me? Ooh, sorry. Jack, why are you fussing? Are you going to have to go in the wrap? No. You're so hungry, you want to eat it? Yeah. <laughs> you have lunch in there. Why don't you go eat your lunch? I want to eat that. You want to eat this? Yeah, I love food. Let's well, see. I've got to gotta get it cooked first. You can't eat it like this. It'll make me so 
my tummy so full. It would make your tummy so full. Mmm, mm, yummy. I'm so happy to eat me. I'm so happy I eat this. I ought to just make pumpkin puree for you because you eat it. You'd probably like it chopped and roasted too, you think? There are two meals my husband and I love the most. Well, that's not actually true because we love a lot of those old fashioned cozy meals, but there are two in particular that I make a lot. And lately it's been every week or multiple times a week. One of these is meatloaf. I have a basic meatloaf recipe that is tried and true, which is what I made on this night specifically, but I do love to change it up for each season, adding fresh tomatoes and peppers in the summer, herbs in the spring, adding maybe half sausage, half beef with a little squash or pumpkin, brown sugar and sage in those cooler months, but just letting the taste of the seasons take a classic meal like this to a whole new level. On this day, I was craving just my simple classic meatloaf. I had some leftover buttermilk biscuits that were a little stale at this point. Rather than throwing them out, I made biscuit breadcrumbs for our meatloaf. I do make biscuits very regularly, so we usually have them lying around most of the time. So I just popped them into the food processor once they were a little bit stale and used them for the flour or breadcrumb component in the meatloaf. We like to just add some salt, pepper, and then I'll either do garlic cloves or garlic powder and an onion or onion powder if it's something for my husband. He doesn't eat onions. I also like to add an egg per pound of meat and the breadcrumbs with a little milk or tomato sauce. My husband also loves it loaded with cheese and topped with a tomato glaze then baked until it is crispy around the edges sometimes i use ketchup sometimes i will add more tomato sauce for this glaze it really just depends on what i have on hand whoa whoa mm, yummy mama told it that you buy that say Since it was the weekend when I filmed some of these recipes, you actually don't see the baby in the wrap. But with all of the cooking and baking that we do, I have been having to wash my wraps daily. I usually have him attached to me and they end up with flour and butter all over them. But they are such a necessary part of getting things done with a baby in tow. 
and thriving during having a newborn rather than surviving when having a newborn. I've only ever used the knit wraps. I really like Solly, but I've been wanting to try a woven wrap. But have you seen the prices of woven wraps? I'm a frugal gal, and um, I just can't justify the price point. I didn't even like the price point of my beloved Solly baby wraps when I was getting some new wraps for Jack. So I made my own knit wrap as well by just taking fabric and cutting it. So when I saw that woven wraps are even more expensive, I went fabric shopping again because some of those woven wraps are easily $200 to $400. And I even saw some that cost more than that. And I know, I know fabric, especially nicely woven fabric, you pay for what you get and you pay for the nice fabric. But my goodness, I just can't justify it. So while I'm sure this isn't the best fabric or even the best, most correct way to do this, I'll share what I did to get a woven baby wrap for about $25 in 30 minutes of an afternoon. Just want to watch me sew. Sew. Because you sew so cute to sew. Because I'm so cute to sew. <laughs> You're so happy to sew. You're so happy that I sew? Yeah. Mom, <sighs> well, I'll teach you one day. Will that be fun? I found these tan buffalo check tablecloths yeah. online after doing a little bit of research and seeing that in some discussion boards for baby wearing mamas, they were talking about these ta this specific brand of tablecloth for these baby wraps. And so it's 100% cotton. And when I looked up the brand, it was a Target brand. I'm not normally a Target shopper for some personal reasons, but they were only $20 a piece. I did end up paying $40 total to buy two, but I only needed a little section of the second. And the rest of it I will use for another project. I'm kind of considering a dress for my daughter and for fall and winter dresses for her. Now, if you want larger than like a size five wrap, you'll need a little more of that second tablecloth, but I don't think you should need more than two of the tablecloths and you should have some fabric left over. I wanted mine to be 28 inches by 180 roughly and folded in half lengthwise. This gave me two 29 inch sections, which was perfect because one side was already hemmed and I needed to add another one inch hem. I took a 16 inch by 29 inch piece from the second cloth and I just sandwiched it in between the two longer pieces so that it would meet the length needs for my size wrap. And then it also helps you to find the center when you're actually putting this on. I hemmed up the raw edge and then I had to serge one of the raw hems from putting the pieces together because I had forgotten to hem it. Um, so you could either serge those edges or you could hem them before you sew it all together. Three seams, 30 minutes of an afternoon rest time and $25 worth of fabric for this beautiful woven baby wrap that I have already used at least 10 times and it's strong enough to hold my toddler because we tried it. <laughs> I love to sew, but I love it even more when it actually saves me money. When we tuck kids, we'll receive it, huh? Ah. Well, thank you for joining me here for another few days of fall. If you are new, please consider joining me and subscribing. I love sharing the everyday beauty in our farmhouse here in the country. Thanks for stopping by.